Hi, I'm Alex McCord and welcome to The Real Deal on TheStir.com. Today we're discussing episode 5 of I Dream of Nene, The Wedding, behind the scenes Atlanta gossip, and a New Jersey firing bloodbath. Well, first, let's talk Nene. We've got a Mad Hatter Tea Party from Hell and reality TV scripture. Let's talk about the bridesmaids first. At first, I found myself watching and thinking, okay, nine bridesmaids is a recipe for disaster in any wedding anywhere, but a wedding filmed for reality TV, you may as well go and set all those hats on fire. Now, Nene's trying to be as nice as she can to her girls. She's buying them Louboutins, and I don't care if production's paying, they're still fabulous shoes. She's got them Botox and dresses and brings everybody together for this Mad Hatter tea party. And I finally realized why Nene cast Diana as a bridesmaid. They should make her an Atlanta housewife next season. Sometimes you have people in your real life who just naturally make great reality TV. There are two major personality traits to look for, and you can have one or the other, not both. Number one, you can have somebody who takes direction perfectly and will do anything you say. Example, Lisa Hochstein from Miami. Or number two, you can have people with absolutely zero self-awareness that what they are doing and saying is making them look really, really bad. Example, Luann De La Sepp's New York City and Diana the Bridesmaid. Diana has no clue that she's alienating everyone, a fact that I am sure Nene picked up on before she cast her. Diana also can't buy the concept that she is supposed to be friends with the housewives and the LA people because none of this seems real to Diana because they have no long history with Nene. But that act of not being able to buy it makes her angrier and therefore makes her even better reality TV. Good job, Nene. What else happened this episode? Well, Nene and Greg have to change their wedding venue. Unfortunately, at three weeks out, there's just not enough time to get permits and tents together for an outdoor wedding, so they have to move it, begrudgingly, to a hotel. Also, because of no time, she's had to send out Evite invitations to her wedding. Ha <laughs> ha! Reality TV scripture! Context is everything. Many times, things that you would do in real life without blinking get made into high drama on the High Housewives sees because other cast members get snarky about it. Example, back in New York a few years ago, I wore cream to a wedding and got killed. Never mind, it was a garden wedding. Number two, this season on Miami, Adriana DeMora sent out e-bites to her wedding and the cast members were horrified. They talked about it. They made fun of her. Well, Nene has just done the exact same thing. However, because there were no cast members to snark about it, nobody made a stink. It was fine, just like it is in real life. Speaking of real, let's get to some real-world gossip from Atlanta land. Two big things happened this week. One, Candy Burris attempted to sue Kim Zolciak for royalties over Tardy for the Party, and the lawsuit was dismissed. Kim's team argued that the lawsuit was nothing more than a publicity stunt to get press for Candy's spinoff, The Candy Factory. Now, in reality TV land, cast members use this argument all the time. It's one of the oldest ones in the Housewives playbook. If anybody does anything, oh, they're just trying to get press. This is the first time I've ever seen it play out in a court of law. That could set an interesting precedent. And second, did you hear what Nene supposedly did this week? Well, according to RumorFix.com, Nene got a little hot under the collar at a charity baseball game with her favorite frenemy, Marlo. They must have been filming as producers were present, and apparently the argument got out of control even for Housewives drama. A producer tried to break it up, and you won't believe what happened next, allegedly. The reports say Nene broke a bottle over the head of the producer and fled the scene. Woo! Okay. Even if she fled the scene, she could hit and run, but she's going to have to see this producer again. And I've heard of crazy workplace drama, but have you ever hit your boss over the head with a bottle? And finally, breaking news from New Jersey. There has been a bloodbath bloodier than any hit on The Sopranos. Phew! Reports released this morning say that Jacqueline is out. We know Caroline is out. They say that Dina is officially in, and Kathy has been demoted to a friend of the housewife. Plus, there are three new ones, including a set of twins. So, of last season's cast of five, only two have survived. They've gotten rid of more than they've kept. Wow. Filming starts in November, which is exactly what I said should happen yesterday, because they've got to start ASAP so that they can finish before Teresa has to maybe go away in the spring. You know, it's interesting. Um, I, I feel badly on 
behalf of Jacqueline and Kathy and who knows what's going on with Caroline and her spinoff. I mean, the season got really dark and a lot of times the network will blame that on the cast, but it's not the cast, it's the editing. Every single season, every single city, you hear people complaining that they filmed all these shiny, happy scenes that don't get shown. So if it was dark, it was dark because they made it dark. We'll see if it gets better next season. For now, I am Alex McCord. You are watching The Real Deal on the Stir.com. Let me know what you thought in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.